Today's code art slash effect is this right here, where I'm getting this cool kind of faceted dynamic sculptural art thing. Let's build it, it's gonna be easy. Here's the code for our basic template. To get started, I want to import the OBJ letter. The first thing we'll do is to load an OBJ file. Okay, no errors there. I'm gonna write the code to load the OBJ file down here. That's not a bad start, GitHub Copilot. Here's that one, I don't like this. Don't like this, don't like this. That would probably work, but whatever. Um, I also want, isn't that interesting, assets teapot? Let's call it assets hand. Let's get a manager in here, a loading manager. And we'll use that manager here. And let's define an onload dot onload. That's fine, but we don't need the curly braces. Whoa. And we'll just say init scene and pass in our scene data. If you watched my last video, you saw me use this same pattern. Scene data is equal to, I just want, I just want one property in there, geo. And right now it's defined as nothing. Now, when we load, let's call this OBJ. When we load this, I want to traverse it. Actually, let me just write let geo. And then I'm going to say, thank you, object.traverse child. And if that child is a mesh, grab its geometry. Boom. And now, finally, scene data dot geo equals geo. I'm going to wrap everything from the defining the mesh here down to the animate method in this init scene method. Okay, like that. And if I hit save, nothing changes. Although we are loading a model, console.log data. Let's see what that data looks like. It's an object that has one property called geo. Let's deconstruct that property. Const geo is equal to data. And I wanna center it. I'll show you why in a second. So I don't need this geometry anymore because I'm gonna use the geo I just loaded. Let's see how that looks. And I've got a hand. Let's get rid of that um, rotation.x. It's a little small, and if I center it up, it'll look better. Be right in the center of the screen. Let's scale it up slightly. Mesh dot scale that multiply scalar or set scalar. Three, that's gonna be just right. There you go. Already looking pretty cool. Let's change the material to a matte cap material because those are awesome. I'm not gonna need this light and this material I'll change to a mesh matte cap here, material. Let's see what happens if I don't give it a, a, anything else. Okay, that's what happens. Nothing. <laughs> um, I'm, I don't need this color anymore, but I do wanna give it a matte cap property. Um, and instead of defining this texture loader here, text loader instead. I like to set it up outside const text loader equals a new texture loader. And let's see what that looks like. Wow, it's really cool. I kind of want to change. No, maybe I don't want to change the background color. Um, real quick, 
flat shading is going to give it a really cool kind of crystalline look. Um, but I'm getting ahead of myself. Okay. The last thing I want to do is to add a plane in front of this, which has a, a mesh physical material, a transparent material that acts as a lens. And we're going to distort that plane so that the lens is going to create all these facets kind of like you see here. And we're going to animate that as well. So let's give that a shot. Uh, put it right below the geometry. Sorry, right below the model. Model. And let's do it here. We'll call this a lens plane. Kind of like that. Lens Geo is a plane geometry, and the lens material, oh, actually, I'm grabbing the positions, too. You'll see why in a second. Um, okay. A for loop. I'll explain that in a second, complex, and get the vertex normals. Um, so I'm manipulating the geometry before I even create the plane, which is probably uh, getting ahead of myself a little bit. Here's what's happening in these lines of code here. I grab all the positions of the vertices in this plane, which in this case, there's a hundred of them. Then I iterate over them and I define this random Z pause. And I say, hey, if we're on the um, third, the Z coordinate each time, assign it this random Z pause. And then I compute the vertex normals. Um, I'll show you how that matters in a second. Now I want to create a lens material, just a mesh physical material that has no roughness and kind of thickness and fully transmissive. Flat shading, we'll get to in a second. Now I want to create a mesh and add it to the scene, actually move it toward the camera a little bit, then add it to the scene like that. Let's see what happens. See how it's kind of fat, more faceted now? Um, I'm going to compute the vertex normal, see what happens with that when I do that. I don't really see much of a difference, to be honest with you. I wonder if I c turned off the flat shading. It's pretty subtle, but there's, um, there's kind of a warping happening, happening. I can turn it up a lot. Let's make the warping 10 times more. Look at that. Oh my God. It's so cool and distorted. I'm going to dial the warping back. The, the warping is caused by the distance I manipulate those pixels. Anyway, I want to animate this plane. Come down to the animate method. And here I'm rotating that mesh. It started out as a cube and now it's um, the hand. I'm also going to, whoops, what the hell's going on? I'm going to rotate this lens mesh I created as well. And let's see what that looks like. Maybe I'd give that a negative time mold. Can you even tell? Hang on, turn on the flat shading and we can tell. And yeah, that's, that's what's happening there. Do you think that BG sphere is adding or subtracting? So if I take the BG sphere away, maybe it's better actually. And I could also change the color of the BG sphere. Um, I, I didn't intend to go over this BG sphere, but if you're interested, let me know and I can go over it in another video. Let's see, let's make it a blue color. I'm not sure it's adding much. Also, I could dial the lightness down. Oh, sorry, the, the saturation. Is that better or worse? Doesn't seem better. I think we should get rid of that BG sphere and just go with a black background. I think the effect is cooler. Okay. Some variations you can do on this project. You can load different models. For example, you could load a skull. Um, the skull is really tiny, so I'm going to blow it up. I'm going to scale it up. Um, 
in addition to loading different models, you could use different matcap materials or just different materials in general. Like for example, this one. Play around with flat shading. Oh, I don't see any difference. I kind of like that blue though. And what happens if I add the BG sphere back with the blue? Eh, whatever. I think this steel looked better. Let's go back. A different model. Astronaut. Scale it way down. And we can see our astronaut. How cool is this? Oh, um, let's go back to the hand real quick. Try, oh, scale it back up, duh. You know, you could take your models into something like the 3JS editor or Blender and normalize them so you didn't have to change the scale each time. I didn't do that. You could also, for this plane geo, turn off flat shading to get just a more warpy look. And if that's not pronounced enough for you, crank it up even more. Yeah, that's so cool. That's off way over the top though. Kinda can't see it as well there. Play around with the detail on that lens plane. Let's crank it up 10 times as much. See what effect that has. Wow. So it has that effect. What if I dial this way down? 10 times less variation in the Z's and we get a kind of watery look. Oh, so cool. Play around with this and see what you come up with and please share. Um, also, if you enjoyed this video, tell your friends. If you want to support me on Patreon, uh, that would be great. It takes time to make these videos and I really love doing it. That's it for this time. I'll see you in the next one.